everyone, Mr. E here with another hands-on robotic tutorial video. And in this one, we're looking at how the Smart World add-on kit can expand the capability of your MBOT2 robot. All right, so in another one of my tutorials, I look at what it takes to get started with the MBOT2 from assembly and basic programming working with the MBOT2 and the CyberPy that comes with it. But in this video, we're gonna open up the Smart World add-on that you can get from makeblock.com. And the Smart World add-on gives us the flexibility of adding a couple different things to our MBOT2 robot from an arm, a grabber, a surveying tool, or even a robotic carrier. So let's see what it takes to actually build some of these things, attach it to our MBOT2 to robot and then program it to function through the real world. You can get the Smart World add-on pack as a bundle when you buy your MBOT2 from makeblock.com and I have the link for this below the video or you can also buy it separately for $79.99 US at the time of making this video if you already have an MBOT2 robot. And for educators, I also recommend you check out MakeBlock's STEM grant guide to see if there's funding opportunities available to support you and your students. There's a lot of great add-ons for the MBOT2 robot from different chassis to an AI-driven camera or a controller, but I think the Smart World add-on kit is the best for experienced makers or, or aspiring young makers and for STEM programs in schools. Like the MBOT2, assembly is required, and this is done using the same type of high-quality metal parts and screws. You can find digital instructions and guides on the MakeBlock website, but a paper guide is also included with your Smart World kit, and I found this to be helpful, especially when checking that you have the right screws using the scale images from step to step within the printed manual. Now, the Smart World add-on kit actually includes parts and instructions to build three different add-ons for the MBOT2, a robotic arm, a carrier, and a surveying tool but you don't have enough parts to make all three, so you need to choose which one you wanna create. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create the robotic arm, which for me was the most exciting one to create and also the most complicated one that used the most parts within the Smart World add-on kit. In some of MakeBlock's lessons and tutorials, they actually show how a set of three MBOT2 robots, each with a different Smart World accessory installed, can work together to complete a real-world challenge, like a robotic arm that picks something up and puts it into the back of a carrier robot after it's been surveyed by another robot. And this could be a really cool curricular opportunity if you have a robotics class where different teams are working together to solve real world problems using their MBOT2 robots. But as you start to build your smart world accessory, maybe more specifically the robotic arm, you will find that it's far more complex than building the MBOT2 chassis. This was partly due to more parts being needed, as well as a little bit more open-endedness with how the parts went together, but also the types of parts that are used too. Like the MBOT2, the Smart World parts are built using metal components and screws, but unlike the MBOT2, you will need different nuts, washers, and set screws, which made assembly a bit more challenging with a lot smaller parts than you have with the typical chassis. It took me about 20 minutes to put the robotic arm together, and I think it would be more suitable for middle school age students or younger students with quite a bit of experience and some adult supervision. And the robotic arm in the Smart World kit also comes with two high precision servo motors, which are different from the drive motors that we have on our chassis. This allows for more precise angle control where we can set the robotic arm or a surveying tool to a specific angle, which allows for a lot more precision and control in our different robotic challenges. These motors connect directly to the MBOT2's controller and some of the expansion ports that are unused on the basic MBOT2 chassis, and all the necessary cables and things are included with the Smart World add-on kit. So with the arm attached, it was time to test to see if I did it correctly, but I was disappointed to see that there weren't any example programs on my CyberPy like there were when I was testing the base MBOT2 chassis. I was also surprised and disappointed to see that there wasn't an extensive collection of sample programs to use, at least at the time of making this video, like you'll find with the standard MBOT2 and other MakeBlock robots. There are some lessons and tutorials to accompany the Smart World kit, but I struggled to find any pre-written code at the time of making this video to test things out. Hopefully that's something that MakeBlock expands in the future. So instead, I chose to make a simple program to test the functionality of my Smart World arm myself. After connecting to my MBOT2 in live mode, I used my keyboard keys to control the arms of the servo. The up and down servo was connected to pin four and the gripper servo was connected to pin three. I used the arrow keys on my keyboard to set the angle of each motor, testing the limits to see what angle worked well. From my testing, which could vary a little bit for you depending on how you fastened all of your parts together, I found that up was about 80 degrees and down was about 160 degrees. And for the gripper, 
80 degrees was open and 140 degrees was closed. So with that basic testing, and again, it could vary a little bit for you, I was ready to move into a more complex program where my MBOT2 traveled automatically to my hand, took a ball out of my hand, and then went and put it somewhere else. To do this, we'll start by creating two events, one where the CyberPy starts and we display some basic instructions about what program is running using the print command. Then in an event when the B button is pressed, we can run the rest of our program. First, we can drag the servo commands from our test program over to the event that when B is pressed, starting with having the arm down at 160 degrees and the gripper open at 80 degrees. Next, we want to drive until the MBOT2 sees my hand. And there's a lot of different ways to program an operation like this, like using a conditional, like an if or an else statement. But I'm going to use a while loop that will allow the robot to run while the ultrasonic sensor is reading distances from objects to be more than 10 centimeters away. Meaning that whenever the robot is more than 10 centimeters away from something, it'll be driving forward. But once something comes within 10 centimeters, we will exit the while loop and move on to something else. So within the while loop of being greater than 10 centimeters, we can be moving forward at 50% power to drive until something comes within. Once an object is closer than 10 centimeters, our program will move out of the while loop and we can do something different. First, we want to stop our robot. And I find that one of the simplest ways to do this is to use our move forward command, but at 0% power. Now that we've stopped at my hand, I want to close the gripper around the ball that I'll be holding by setting servo 3, which is the gripper servo, to be 140 degrees. Then I'm going to wait a second to make sure that the arm doesn't just rip up without grabbing and closing around the ball, and then raise the arm up by setting servo 4 to be 80 degrees. Lastly, I want to drive away. So we can do a simple turn command, then drive for a short distance, then lower the arm and open the gripper to put it down. And for fun, to make sure that we know that our program has ended, we can adjust the CyberPies display too. Let's show some rainbow lights and play a little tone to signal that we are done. So with my program written, I first wanted to test and do some troubleshooting when I've connected to my robot in live mode, just to make sure that things look like it's working as it should. But once I've written the code successfully, I was able to rename it and upload it to the MBOT2 to test it out in the real world. So this is a pretty simple autonomous program, but hopefully you can see the potential of the smart world robotic arm as it drives up to my hand, grabs the gripper, and then drives and delivers it somewhere else. So really, the sky is the limit when creating a more complex and versatile robot like this one. All right, now while that isn't all that there is to it, because I only showed how to build one of the three options within the Smart World add-on pack, hopefully this video has showed you what the Smart World add-on pack can offer to your MBOT2 robot. I think for education, especially for middle school or upper age groups, this is a crucial add-on to take the basic M2 chassis and bring in a much wider, widespread possibilities of what students can do and create with their MBOT2. And that Smart World add-on pack, as you saw, gives you a lot of parts, which means that you could do some more open-ended design, as well as following along with the step-by-step -step guides to create the gripper or the carrier or the surveying robot for whatever the challenges that you'd like to add to your class. But as mentioned, it is a little bit more complex to build than the base M2 chassis. So while the M2 may be programmable in the elementary school level and even buildable with fourth or fifth grade students, the Smart World add-on pack is definitely more suitable for older students due to the more complex parts. But nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. Please check out my other tutorials and guides to learn more about this robot and all the other STEM things that I do with Mr. E. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more.